Hello and welcome to this video. Today I'm actually going to show you parts of a diorama build I made for a competition, specifically the red scribe competition on my mini factory. Now I'm starting out kind of in the middle because I actually stream uh, a lot of this diorama build on my Twitch. I will actually put it in the description down below because sometimes I do craft streams on there and I also stream a lot of uh, craft things that I actually am not ever going to make into a YouTube video. So if you're curious, uh, go check it out. And I also uh, of course do some gaming on there like, I just finished Tears of the Kingdom, I'm gonna play Paper Mario uh, in a few days, and yeah. So if you're interested, check out the link down below. And anyways, uh, what is this competition about? Well, basically, it's a competition of a figure painting and making a diorama. And what you're seeing me do right now is painting and making some books. Uh, just basically, so most of these are like fake books made with a piece of like thin craft foam that I just glued into some paper as like the backing or the cover, I guess, of the book. Uh, some of these I actually stuck some paper and uh, like the green book I'm painting here. And basically, all I did was I stacked some paper on top, uh, basically, gave it the same like outer cover treatment. And uh, yeah, all I'm doing right now then after is painting it and then I'm going over with some white to actually like clean up the edges again. And with that I have a ton of books and a ton of books this project needs. Now the competition gives you quite a lot of creative freedom. All you have to do is basically print the figure or actually you can also get it uh, sent to you uh, if you don't have a 3D printer and uh, then basically you make the diorama. Now the competition scores you on how you paint the figure and actually how the diorama is made. Uh, if you're actually using other person's 3D uh, printed uh, model stuff then you have to like name them and name the model and stuff but since I'm not doing that uh, because I wanted to build everything myself. Uh, yeah, I luckily don't have to name anybody, but that also means that it is way more work to make the things I'm making. Uh, actually, the bookshelf was another thing I made on stream, and I will, like, in one of the things I'm going to show you later, show you how I made the, like, wood texture and stuff. But basically, all of the furniture in this case is foam. So, nothing too special, nothing too exciting, just foam that I scored with a knife and then blasted with a heat gun and then carefully covered in a thin layer of super glue to actually make it a little bit sturdier because foam is quite soft. Uh, the only part I actually 3D printed is the window uh, grid because I had a hard time. I tried before like for hours to make it work with some wires. It just didn't turn out great. It looked super wonky, not very detailed. So what I did was draw up a little grid in Shaper and then print it out in like a two layer PLA uh, kind of situation. So it's slightly flexible. And then I'm using just some clear film covered in UV resin where I'm gonna uh, put the grid in. And this should like represent like a black painted metal grid in front of the window. Now, since this is a pretty like thin layer of UV resin, after it uh, cured, I can actually perfectly uh, cut it out with just some basic crafting scissors. Uh, the only issue I had that uh, the resin liked to like not really stick that well to the 3D print at first, so I had to like hold it on a bit. But after it was cured, it was really sturdy. Uh, now, the one thing that's left, of course, is trimming it, so I'm just marking out the window I pre-made uh, and just cutting it out then, as I said, with scissors. But also, this window is very see-through. Now, in 3D uh, models or like tiny dioramas, basically, um, the trick is that you, if you don't want to model the outside world of a thing, then uh, you can make the light diffuse through it. Because if I would just shine a light through this window, it would totally like be like really bright, not diffused at all, and it would look like basically just just like 
the light and you could see like through it and see like um, my room and stuff which I don't want. So I actually picked up some of this vinyl which is like vinyl you can use for windows or like shower uh, like doors and stuff and it's, it's like this milky effect and this one I'm gonna actually layer up in a couple of layers because I know that uh, one will not be enough to diffuse the light. I actually tested like a tiny piece before. And all I'm doing is covering the window from the back where the um, shaker film that I used is because uh, that's the easiest way to apply it and uh, then I can of course cut it out. Now to glue in this window I'm just using some UV resin to fill in all of the gaps and afterwards, uh, which where my camera basically cut out, I'm actually gonna also like put in like a tiny strip of foam on the inside where you will be able to see the gap between the uh, window and the frame just to like blend it in a little bit more and that one I'm gonna color with color. I actually uh, left the window unpainted before because I wasn't sure how I wanted to em embed the frame and the window but I decided that uh, yeah I'm as I said, I'm just gonna use some UV resin and glue it in. So here you can see me how I basically painted the rest. I just painted like also the walls like black and then gave it like a uh, white dry brush. And uh, in the end, like for the walls, I actually dabbed on a tiny bit of like green as a mossy like kind of surface. And also I had a pretty big gap in the window. I must have like drawn it out a little bit wrong. So I actually used some of the off-cut grid that I had still left from the window making and I just filled that in a little bit and uh, that should help with the light not shining through too much. Uh, now of course the books yeah, also needed to be glued into the bookshelf, uh, so that's what I'm doing right here. And this is just a small amount of books. I spent hours basically making different heights and variation of books, making sure to also make some with the paper. Uh, actually the paper ones, uh, some of them I just glued at the spine to make it look like they can be opened, uh, which some of them actually can, but I, I just basically wanted to have like slightly open books, like they read a lot or they has been written in a lot, um, which hopefully uh, should work well in filling in some space in the shelf. But anyways, uh, let me tell you about my dear. Now the character's name is the Red Scribe and uh, since he's the evil character uh, I decided why not let him like have a very like peaceful looking study since he's a scribe he must like books and studying in a way uh, but with like some hidden details on the story with what she's actually researching um, according to his evil schemes. So I decided to add some like tiny little plants and stuff, like magical plants and like skulls and such. Uh, well, they're not too tiny. To like make it look like he's doing research and all kinds of like magical things or, and creatures. And uh, yeah, basically to make these plants in the glass. I actually searched out the tiniest glass I had and it still looks gigantic so I just went with it and put in some like gigantic dried plants. And all I'm doing to like weather it is just taking my finger with some black paint and acrylic paint and just dabbing it on and that will give it like a nice foggy effect and then I'm also adding a little bit of brown um, to also make it a little bit more foggy. Now what is the black scribe researching in my diorama? What he's actually researching is a way to revive ancient creatures. I know it doesn't look like much, but he collected a lot of skulls. And actually I made a book on stream um, that basically like shows some ancient creature heads and some text about them. Uh, now because it's so tiny you can't read the text, but basically the scribe is hatching on all of these lost and forgotten creatures and he's trying to find all the pieces of the skeletons, trying to revive them to make an undead uh, army for himself of mystical creatures. Now, of course this takes a lot of research, so he spends a lot of time in his study. So let's actually get to the miniature painting. 
I actually started out with a black base coat and then I gave it a, I think it's called a xenophile highlight or something like that, basically a directional highlight to where the window will be. And as you can see, when I apply the next coat with my airbrush, which is the red, uh, there's some parts that are way lighter uh, from the white uh, paint as a base than the other parts, and that's basically what the highlight's doing. Now I wasn't too happy with the shade of red, so I actually mixed up a very, very watery layer of uh, this brighter red, and I hope this will turn down a little bit. Now it will dry way darker than what it looks, uh, and it will not actually cover too much of the highlight. Um, and next up, I'm just doing like a darker red wash. I hope this will uh, stain a little bit more than just the folds, but I'm trying to like apply it everywhere to again turn the shine down a little bit. And yeah, basically this is just a normal red wash with uh, just a paper towel that I rub off. Now sadly my camera cut out, but I afterwards also used a very watery black wash that I like applied to all the creases. And after that dried, I'm just doing a very light dry brush with this red. Now it's very hard to see on camera, but in person you can still see the highlight I applied a little bit and I hope that once I take the pictures of the diorama you will really be able to see uh, the details of the painted miniature a little bit better uh, through the highlight uh, that I painted as a base coat. Now what you cannot really see here is these hands that I'm painting right now are tiny and you will probably not be able to see them in my pictures but I wanted to add them anyways because they're there and this is a very beautifully uh, sculptured miniature so yeah I also painted the hands in and uh, then I went on and with some paper uh, basically made like a tiny bit of paper stacks and those I gave some weathering effect and then I used a very thin pencil and just drew on some like tiny details, like make it look like they are written on top of. Um, what you actually see here is the lectern and it may look a bit huge, but that's on purpose because obviously some of the books the scribe will be reading will be really, really large. And I wanted him to have place to like put a chart down, uh, put like scrolls down and maybe a book on top to be able to write on it. And actually I also made an inkwell on the stream uh, with a tiny little feather that we, we will see in the review picture so that it looks like he's actually like writing something. As I mentioned before I made like a tiny little wooden frame but I had to wait until it uh, dried for quite a while and until the resin cured so I only got to paint it now but yeah. I'm basically going in with some wood brown, it's burnt sienna in, in this case, and I'm just going around and like painting it basically. Um, now as promised before, how did I make all of the wood textures and like the floors and stuff? Basically for the floors I textured a giant piece of foam, then cut it into strips and organized it randomly to make the boards like a little bit more random. Uh, for the beams I didn't texture them before I glued them down, that was basically just because I uh, wanted them to have like a sturdy base when I glued them down or else they would have been too thin and since I also textured the sides a little bit it was just easier to do this way. So to texture foam, this is just basic EVA foam that I'm using in craft foam, I'm just using my knife and making some score lines that will in the end look like wood and when you see I'm passing over it with my heat gun, it will open up. It will like basically like melt the top layer of the foam and it will reveal the texture. Now you of course have to be careful with fumes, I'm actually wearing a respirator there. Uh, because you never know uh, what happens when you melt these kind of foams and you don't want to use too much heat because you can actually like burn it. Uh, but it, it takes a little bit of trial and error but uh, I guess just starting with a low heat with your heat gun or hair dryer and then upping the heat uh, should work quite well. And basically all of the wood got the same treatment for me. It got like basically just a coat of brown paint and then a black wash. Uh, now for the floor I actually uh, gave it like a dry brush with some very light brown to make it look a bit more worn out in the like places where uh, people would walk. Uh, but that's basically all uh, for the ceiling and walls and stuff. I wanted to add a little bit of moss 
just to make it look like this is a very old building. Now I didn't want too much moss to build up because obviously um, he's still taking care of it a little bit uh, because of the books there. Um, but I wanted it to look like he's just basically staying in a very very old tower or something like that that he found. Um, was abandoned and just using it as a study and because it's very hidden away uh, it would be the perfect place for him to plan his schemes. I also made uh, this little like covered thing uh, in stream, uh, basically same as with just some foam that I scored and then glued together with some super glue and painted and this is for holding gold. You may notice the um, tiny little like shelvings in there are quite narrow and that's because it's just for stacking all of the random scrolls I'm making. Basically just some uh, like weather paper with like some very washed up brown paint uh, in different sizes that I'm uh, rolled up onto a brush and to like make it look like a bit more like a rolled up scroll I basically uh, just applied the glue to one and like in the middle to make it look like the edges are like feathering out a little bit. And all I did after that was just uh, also glue it into the diorama. Now I know I'm making some big jumps here, but that's as I said, because I streamed it and actually the stream quality wasn't the best with the camera, so when I tried to recording it, uh, half of the footage was basically more than unusable and the parts that were were <laughs> just mainly the bookmaking and since I already filmed that, yeah, it wasn't really worth to include that. I also wanted to make a map, since the setting is basically Middle Earth. I wanted to make a map that's uh, really reminiscent of it, like kind of showing like the surrounding area of this um, scribe's place. Uh, so basically uh, the map actually depicts a uh, river and uh, like pond or no, it's more of like a lake system uh, that I actually found on the map in Middle Earth. It's like on the like far southeast and I like used it as a base for like making a tiny little bit of more detail around it and like making it the main piece of map like kind of like a zoomed in version of the middle of map just as a tiny detail that ties it together. Now, of course since this is a study he needs light so I also made some candles with some uh, just polymer clay that I mix some white with some tiny bit of yellow and then I basically just made some tiny cylinders poked in like the end with a tiny like ball stylus to make it look like you know the wax set has melted and put a divot in and then I put in a tiny little wig which was uh, just some wire which I painted black. Now because uh, all of these candles like are lit uh, very regularly and replaced regularly, they spill. So I didn't want to actually use UV resin uh, because I thought that would be too tiny and a little bit too thick. So I actually mixed up some uh, high gloss varnish with just some paint, uh, just some white and a little bit of brown and yellow. And that's what I'm uh, applying all of the uh, over the candles since uh, they obviously like wax is a bit shiny and I applied liberal amounts on the um, desk and like all around the candles where the wax would have spilled. And then I also uh, of course put some papers down. Actually in this shot you can kind of see the inkwell on the desk to the left there. Um, and yeah, that's also just made out of clay. Now uh, since this is obviously as I said an old building, it also will be quite dusty. So all I'm using here is some chalk powder and a very soft brush and I'm applying it liberally like over all the faces that would have a little bit of bust. So the edges of the bookshelves, the windowsill and all of those. Uh, basically, yeah, especially like on the high uh, top of the shelves, which you probably will not be able to see in the picture, but that was the tiny detail I like to add. But he's really just giving it a little dust because he's a studying person. He can't bother to clean, right? So yeah, just some, uh, I'm using like a very pale skin tone color. And I also make sure to actually place the scribe in there and add some dust around his cape because obviously it's dragging on the ground. And I also like add tiny little pieces of, of brown dust on the ground to make it look like dirt. 
And that's basically all that I uh, filmed without streaming it, so here you can actually see the final results. I'm super happy with how this turned out. I think it looks absolutely stunning and yeah. Uh, if I will win this competition, I don't know. Uh, it would be nice, but honestly, I had so much fun on making this diorama, it wouldn't even matter. It has been like ages since I last made a detailed diorama like this, and it just turned out amazingly, so uh, yeah. I'm, I'm super proud of this, and I'm definitely gonna display it in my book nook. I actually painted the uh, uh, backside and all the outer faces black, but I might add some uh, bricks later. On that note, uh, I will hopefully, if I make another diorama, be able to film like more of it when I stream it in the future. I am uh, actually experimenting a bit with the settings, but yeah, as I said, I will not film all of my streams, uh, will just be some like specific ones. So if you actually want to see which projects I'm working on there, check uh, out my Twitch link in the description down below. Um, actually there's a schedule in the information box in my Twitch stream so you can look at when I'm streaming. And uh, yeah, basically that's all. My scribe is now happily in his or maybe not happily, maybe evilly, um, hiding in his uh, little building tower hideout thing, uh, studying on how to take down the world with his evil creatures. Uh, so yeah, I hope the like diorama makes the story like a little bit consistent and it fits uh, to the story. Uh, and I hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, I know it was very chaotic, but I hope there were some like tips and tricks in there on model making or just some simple like things to watch that will help you guys also uh, make a nice like diorama and yeah I hope you enjoyed watching this video let me know in the comments down below what are your opinions on uh, this whole entire project I know it was a long video so uh, to those who stick to the end uh, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time have a great day bye